Jeff, would you like to read? <clears throat> I'm reading out of the King James because it's what's closest to me. Um, starting uh, chapter 45, verse 1. <clears throat> then Joseph could not refrain himself. <clears throat> sorry. Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, cause every man caused every man to go out for me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, come near me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be ear, earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye and go. Let's up talk about uh, actually keep going. Yeah, keep going. But I do want to talk about this. There's a lot of parallels in here with Yahushua. I just, yeah, man, let's, uh, Let's let go to uh, verse 11 and then let's talk. Ver oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> and, and God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye go up to my father, say unto him, thus saith thy son, Joseph, God hath made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, thy herds, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. Okay, let's talk about this, because this is astounding stuff coming out of Yosef's mouth. First of all, the thing... Do we need to kick somebody out? Who do we need to kick out? Yahushua's the defiled name. All right. Yahushua's the defiled name. Let's see. Who's that? Antipriest. Sure. Is it Yiddish brother? Who are you talking about? Antipriest. Antipriest. All right. <clears throat> all right. Ain't got time for all that disrespectful stuff, man. Stay on topic. All right. Um, what I want to focus on here is the. Did anybody want some of this TSC pudding? Whatever. I'd like to have some pudding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's all good. You guys didn't know you were unmuted. Listen. Yosef is saying something very powerful here. And I, I was wrestling with this last night. I was wrestling. I was like, wow, this is heavy, man. <clears throat> Yosef is saying, he says in verse five, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. I don't know if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing, but I am seeing a lot of mercy this is a lot of mercy, man. Yosef got sold, and he's saying, this is God's doing. This is Yahuwah's doing. Whoa, wait a minute. Time out. What are you saying? Are you saying that this was Yahuwah's plan? That's what it sounds like Yosef is saying. And I know I'm usually... 
I'm very big on, on Yahoo's sovereignty. He's sovereign. He can use anybody he wants to do whatever he wants. It's his story. Or like Will's, Will likes to say, it's his game. Okay? It's his game. He created the game. And he's writing it. He's the author. Okay? Um, I do like, I do understand the passage of scripture in the book of Romans that talks about um, for God works all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Um, also, I found a passage of scripture. My wife wrote it down. I forget where it was. I think it's in Genesis, actually, um, where it says that uh, what, what, uh, what the enemy meant for evil, God used for good, you know? So although the brothers were in the flesh and fulfilling the, their, their, their sinful flesh to sell their brother at it because of jealousy, um, Yahuwah used that situation to, for this very moment right here, this very moment where the family, the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is threatened by a famine that is being hit all over the planet. The whole planet is suffering with a famine. Egypt is the only place where there was seven years worth of storage of food to prepare for this seven years of famine. It is crazy, man, the way Yahuwah works, the way he works. If this was Yahuwah's doing, which it could be, I'm not, I'm not against that. It is just, I find that to be just, it just, it just, it breaks your paradigm of what you think about Yahuwah. I mean, it did for me. I mean, I'm thinking about the story like Yosef, I mean, and again, this is what Yosef is saying, and it's not far, it's not far fetched from be, it could be the truth, you know. But Yosef is being very merciful right now. He's being very merciful. He's showing his love for his family, and he's showing his love for Yahuwah. He's showing his love for his father, how much he cares for his 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 father. Um, and he's I just find that to be extremely merciful. Uh, what do you guys think? Dakota, any questions? Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to give the place of that verse for you. It's in Genesis 50, 20. Thank you so much. Yes. You're Genesis very welcome. 50, that's cool. It's a good verse, so I'm sure people will want to look it up. Yeah. Where is it at? 50 uh, verse what? 20. Thank you. But as for you, you meant evil against me. And again, this is Yosef talking to his brothers. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Look at that. That's powerful. Thank you, uh, Dakota. Appreciate you looking that up for me. Jeff. Yeah, um, the two prophetic dreams that he has when he's young tell me that Yah was working the whole time. Mm. Those prophetic dreams, I don't believe, would have happened without that path that he took to get where he's at. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Shows Yahoo's hand the whole time on on the situation, on his life, for sure. Amen. Um, listen, I'm a big fan of justice and getting the punishment that you rightly deserve. I'm all about that. But I also see room for mercy and grace. Or, or in this case, this is how I've been told great, the difference between grace and mercy. And I, I, I'm sure we should do a study on this and show some scripture or whatever. But I like the explanation I've always been given in Christianity. I thought it's very accurate. As I read scripture, I can see it. Grace is when you get things that you don't deserve. When you get good things that you don't deserve. While mercy is not getting what you, not getting the punishments and the consequences that you rightly deserve. That's mercy. Not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. I think that's very good. And here, I think Joseph has shown a lot of mercy. A lot of mercy and grace because he's giving them food. He's providing for them. So I think that's really huge for anyone that says grace is not in the Old Testament. Grace is in the new through Jesus Christ. You know, the Old Testament is the law, it's bondage, it's cruel, it's hard. 
No, there's mercy. There's a lot of mercy in the Old Testament. And here's a good example of it. And then Yahuwah dealing with a rebellious, adulterous spiritual wife, Israel, for hundreds of years, even to this day, shows Yahuwah's mercy to always, he always, his mercy and his grace always existed. So uh, I thought that this was huge. Because according to Torah, and I know Torah hasn't been written yet, but anybody who, what's the consequences, babe? Do you remember this? I don't know if you took notes on this. The consequences of somebody selling their brother to slavery. I love you, Dad. Oh, no, that's I thief. mean, you. That, that's thievery. I'm thinking thief. Or, or kidnapping, right? Kidnapping is, is by death. Okay. So I, I wonder, I will, I will have to you look that to up, but it's like, brother, yeah, the scripture talks about not selling your brother into slavery. Yeah. And I almost feel like it that Torah is related to this this situation with Yosef. But uh anyway, I, I apologize. I didn't I, I didn't prepare know. with all that. Uh anybody else? Rosemary? I actually have a question. Okay. Um I was referring to the dreams that he had when he was a child or young. Uh, one of them, the second one I think, is it also includes his mother bowing down but because this father Jacob says do you think your mother and I are going to bow down to you but I don't recall if at that time his mother was dead did he already have Benjamin because she died in childbirth of Benjamin yeah Benjamin was there so wouldn't she have been dead at the time that he had that dream Genesis 27, I believe. And she certainly is passed by the time that prophetic comes to pass. 29. I'm looking into it right now. Um, that was one detail I just always wondered about. So what's the question? I think I know your question, but what's the question? There she did. Okay. Yeah. I was just a little confused as to why it includes his mother as a, one of the chiefs bowing down to him in the second dream when I believe she would have already been passed. Would it be plausible to say that there are, was it that his mother would bow down or was it that the mothers of his brothers would bow down because they had different mothers? Well, Jacob said, your mother and I. I feel like we addressed this question before and I forgot what my answer was. We did. And I think yeah. we had established that she was, I thought she was dead mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember what else she said, but we did cover that during that lesson. Yeah. So whatever chapter that was, what was that? 30 something? I'm trying to look for it. I think it's 37 is the dream. 37 is the dream. So I would I would uh I would look back at our video on chapter 37. I don't remember what my answer is. On that. Yeah, chapter 37. I'm not sure. I would have to look at um the story again, but um, yeah, I don't know what to say right now. Not a t not, it's not a topic that I've really spent a lot of energy on. So I didn't kind of, I think I kind of answered on the spot as well that day. Um, where are we at here? Jeff, anybody else got any thoughts about this? Milo? Um, well, you just asked in, in the Torah, what does it say about um, selling brothers to slave? So in Leviticus 25, 39, it says, if your brother has grown poor among you and mm -hmm. sells himself to you, you shall not make him to serve as a slave. As a hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with you. He shall serve you, uh, serve with you until the year of Yolim. Um, but he's not supposed to be considered a slave. Just go back to your... Okay. Thank you. All right, let's continue with the reading. Genesis chapter 45. And we are at verse 12. 
It says, and behold your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. I like the oneness that's shown here between Joseph and his mouth, okay? Don't, don't throw stones at me, y'all. Don't throw stones at me, okay? Yosef and his words and his mouth are all part of him. And I like that he says here, go and you shall tell my father of all my glory. He says, um, and behold your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth. I don't know. To me, I find that to be very related to Yahuwah and his word, okay? Yahuwah in his word is his word. His word is himself. It's not somebody else's word. It's not some other deity's word. It's his word. His word is who he is. And that John 1, 1 says it perfectly. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. It doesn't say in the beginning was the word, was with God, and the word was with another God. So anyway, I find that it's not awkward for you to say that I am my words. And my words, it's the same thing when you say life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. In my tongue. Like my words. You know, well, my, my word is. My words can create or destroy. You know, when I speak and I'm speaking something. I'm not going to blame it on Jeff and say that's Jeff's words. No, I'm speaking it. You know, or as we say, my word is my bond. My word is my bond, exactly. Or, or there's another thought is is, is about to escape my mind. Let me say it before it goes away. Um, as a man thinks, so in his heart, so is he. In his heart, so is he. Right. That's kind of what's in my in my. It just. It's a little rusty right there, but it's lingering. All right, um, Jeff, did you have something, Jeff? Well, we were just discussing the significance of my word is my bond and the promises were given by the word Yahusha and how our promises will be paid out later and how that Holy Spirit in us is like a bond that ensures <laughs> to be paid back later. You know, nice. so we were, it has nothing to do with what we're, but we were just discussing it here. <laughs> nice, no, you're entertaining the thought, you're chewing on it. Make it, trying to make it work. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, let's continue. Um, and let's see here. <clears throat> Verse 14. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Again, mercy, man. It's huge. Not just mercy, but I, I feel like it's confidence in Yahuwah's purpose. Yosef is extremely confident that this was Yahuwah. So he is not taking his anger out on his brothers. I'm not saying that this is the standard, y'all. I'm not at all, at all saying that this is the standard. I think regardless if Yahuwah used somebody to commit some kind of sin, it's still a sin and we wouldn't be wrong to apply the scriptural punishment to that particular sin. It wouldn't be wrong. It wouldn't be wrong, but it might not also, it also might not be wrong for us to show mercy. Milo, go ahead. I'm sorry, you're you're smirking. Um, it seems like there's that one of those black people right there. Right uh-oh. I think YouTube is the most place. Milo's not liking YouTube. Who we got? Okay. They're going to worship us. Um. All right. There you go. He's gone. I don't do Black Hebrew Israelites on my channel, spreading their Black Hebrew Israelite doctrines. Garbage. All right. Go, go somewhere else with that stuff. Stop trolling my page. I'm, I don't know. I like the YouTube thing because it kind of sucks all those people in. It's like a bait. I, I find who those people are. And now I can finally block you so you don't. You're not active on my channel anymore. Thank you for visiting us. 
and exposing yourself. I appreciate yeah, I'm you. To go through it All right. Milo's being the watchdog over I'm here. Trying, so She's trying. Try and... to pay attention, Milo. Leave it alone. I can I can get rid of it later. <laughs> Let them have their little moments of fame. Okay? Leave them alone. All right, where are we at? So there's a lot of mercy going on here. Yosef is kissing. There's a lot of bromance. I, I, I like to call it bromance, you know, where the guys get all mushy and gushy with each other. They're hugging and kissing and stuff, you know? So there's a lot of bromance going on here. Verse 16. <laughs> Verse 16, now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's saying, Yosef's brothers have come. So it pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And Pharaoh said to Yosef, say to your brothers, do this, load your animals and depart, go to the land of Canaan, bring your father and your households and come to me. I will give you the best of the land of Mitzrayim and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded, do this. Take carts out of the land of Mitzrayim for your little ones and your wives. Bring your father and come. Also, do not be concerned about your goods, for the best of all the land of Mitzrayim is yours. Then the sons of Israel did so, and Yosef gave them carts according to the command of Pharaoh, and he gave them provisions for the journey. It almost sounds like, I mean, it, om it almost sounds like, welcome to paradise. It's like prophetic of, you know what I mean? Being shown mercy, you're a wicked sinner. I'm a wicked sinner that deserves punishment. And through Yahuwah's mercy, he died for me, paid for my sin, even though I didn't deserve it. And from his mercy, I get to now come into his kingdom. And he gives me all this provision, all this heavenly food, right? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. It's kind of prophetic of that. That's kind of the language I'm feeling, you know? It's like, wow, you go from being this wretched, wicked man to, wow, you're being taken care of by someone in great high royalty status. And who's more royal than Yahuwah himself, you know? Rosemary, am I sparking some thoughts? Yes. Uh, I love that Mitzrayim was the only place that there was found to be bread, mm -hmm. which is analogous to truth amen bread truth yes sure i like i like and uh let's see also do not be concerned about your goods i read all this already verse 21 then the sons of israel did so and yosef gave them carts according to the command of pharaoh and he gave them provisions for the journey. He gave to all of them, to each man, changes of garments. But to Benjamin, he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of garments. Okay, a little extra for his, his actual real brother. All right. And he sent to his father these things, 10 donkeys loaded with good things of Mitzrayim. And 10 female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and food for his father for the journey. So he sent his brothers away. And they departed, and he said to them, See that you do not become troubled along the way. Then they went up, then they went up out of Mitzrayim and came to the land of Canaan to Jacob, their father, and they told him, saying, Yosef is still alive, and he is governor over all the land of Mitzrayim. And Jacob's heart stood still. Oh, don't stay still too long now. I have a heart attack. Because he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words which Yosef had said to them, which might have took a long time, and when he saw the carts which Yosef had sent to carry him, the spirit of Yaakov, their father, was revived. The man's heart stopped for like an hour, y'all. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see what I just saw? My man's heart stopped. He had to hear the whole story, everything, all the details, and then his heart revived. That was a miracle in and of itself, right there. <laughs> I'm just having a little fun with the scriptures. I'm having a little fun. Wow. Um, I feel like I was I was sharing this with Milo yesterday. I said, I'm not a big fan of the brothers getting away so easily. I would at least want them to confess to their father and tell their father the truth about what happened to Yosef. I feel like that would be good repentance, right? I feel like if they hold it and make keep it a secret, I'm not a big fan of that because I don't feel like that's a real confession. I don't feel like that's coming clean with your sin. 
Uh, so me and my wife were debating. Uh, she, I don't know if she still feels this way, but um, she doesn't feel like that detail was told. But I feel like in this in this paragraph here, to me, it would be implied that they told because it says here, um, but verse 27, but when they told him all the words which Yosef had said to them, and for me, that would include, I forgot what verse, where, where is it at? Maybe in the previous chapter, I need my physical scriptures to, to pinpoint it. But there was a point where Yosef, was, remember when Yosef was talking about it is God? That Oh yeah, right here, right up top. Yeah, right up top. Verses three, let's see. Yeah, all this, all this. When, when Yosef is like, yo, don't be mad that you guys sold me into slavery. It was God that, that sent me and saved me for all this. I feel like that would be included in all the words that Yosef said. But my wife would say, no, I think all the words is talking about the instructions of, you know, the last words that he said, which would be right here. And behold your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Mitzrayim and of all that you have seen. Well, that to me would include what was previous before this. So anyway, so it's a little battle. I feel like the brothers got to confess and they got to come completely clean, which I didn't know that before in the past. When I read the story in the past, my previous understanding was the guys never told their dad and dad never knew. And it was like very merciful, but uh, I changed my mind last night. <laughs> uh, will, go ahead. Oh, first, well, uh, first Dakota and then Will. First Dakota, then Will. Go ahead, Dakota. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, you know, in, in regards to Torah, I'm aware that it's not written yet, um, but I see the picture of where he's honoring his father when he sends him the carts and all these things um, back with um, the Hebrews back to um, the, uh, Yosef's father. I like. I like. Yes. I like. Will. Could it also be that uh, Yahuwah was covering uh, Yaakov's uh, uh, covering his son's backsides, if you will, their transgressions, uh, because what does it matter now? Oh, you just you just went muted. What does it matter now is the last thing I heard. Um, Sorry. For me. Can you hear me? Yes. You said, what does it matter? What does it matter now? Because uh, what's it's already happened. They, they've already lived, lived for the last 15 years without him or however long it was. Uh, and it, what it's done is done. But Yahuwah could have also covered their backsides in their father's mind. Because uh, you know the dad had to think about it. He wasn't stupid. You know, it's just that uh, what does it matter now to bring it up and just rub salt in their wombs more? Uh, yeah. So, just like you were talking about earlier, if if uh, if they screwed Yosef uh, and Yosef forgave him, uh, you know, it's it's good. Uh, so, but us, I don't know about you guys, but uh, uh, if we've done anything in our lives that we realized it was garbage in the past, uh, we have to live with ourselves the whole time, even though we're forgiven. Uh, it's it still sucks knowing that uh, you that I've done stuff in the past that uh, I can't go back uh, and get forgiveness for because my previous wife is dead. Uh, you know, so it's uh, you have to just live with it. You know, we uh, we discuss this subject a lot in the healing and deliverance series. Uh, we talk a lot about repentance and forgiveness, holding bitterness, and um, the importance of reconciliation. Uh, but I think, uh, for this subject, for me, if I'm going to relate this to the healing deliverance, it has to do with simply owning up to your sin and bringing what is in the darkness to the light. So I feel like if, if it, the person who was affected severely by Joseph being sold into slavery was dad, dad was really, really hurt. 
to the point where he was still wounded by it, where he wouldn't even let Benjamin away from his side. There, there, there's a, so there's a little, there's something going on there that I feel like healing and deliverance comes with confession of sin. Um, I know someone personally who um, this is this is not just one person. This is various people who know who, who can testify that when a person confesses to them when they were offended by what what happened, it brought healing. You know what I mean? So that would be for me. That's this is my and and again I. I you're right. You're right, Will, to uh, bring up what I said earlier, right? That Yosef is the primary person being offended in this situation. And if he's choosing to deal with this situation the way that he's dealing with it, I think I think it's pretty much none of our businesses, right? I would agree with that. And I, I think I will continue to hold on to that. But I'm just sharing my personal view on how I feel about it. I would like to see them confess and come clean you know because i feel like that would be more of evidence of repentance to me and i feel like it would be helpful to dad um so that dad can know what really happened uh but anyway that's just me that's just me i feel like it did happen according to the scripture i feel like all was brought to light it was all taken care of um but if, if you want to believe that that wasn't part of the discussion, I guess that's kind of up in the air. Well, I think the very next verse, the last verse in 45 might say, what's the father say? The father said, then Israel said, it is enough. Yosef, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Sure, he also. Yeah, we got we got we got grandma in the background. It's all right. The elder so, woman ahead, has spoken. Say? I'm curious. Go ahead. <laughs> what did she say? The elder woman has spoken. She says, yeah. "I'm sure Jacob thought about the prophecies, the dreams from when he was a child." Sure, absolutely, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But you you got to admit there was, there had to be some doubt there, right? If he's thinking his son is dead. He thought Yosef is dead at this point, but all the dreams came back around. It's like, ah, yes, the dreams are accurate. They were Yahoo the whole time. I'm glad, you know, and that would be what's more important, right? So, so to Will's point or to people who are thinking kind of like along the same lines, like what's the point of putting salt on the wounds or whatever, I guess in, in, in Israel's mind, I don't even care about the details of what the heck you guys did to him. The fact is that he's alive. That's all I care about right now, and I want to celebrate. And so my son's, I, forgiven, my son's forgiven you, so therefore will I. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I get that totally, totally. But it, it was something good to bring up in conversation. I felt like I wanted to bring that out today about uh, confession of sin, right? Like a lot of us, we've confessed, we 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 we've committed sins against people years and years ago and i i feel like strongly it's our duty as human beings as believers especially believers of, of yahuwah if you have the ability to apologize and try to reconcile with people i think we should that's our that's our responsibility and there's healing that that is brought in that um healing for the other person um whatever the case may be so the father israel is kind of different because He's like unaware of what happened. Uh, he's not. He's not like Yosef. Yosef is a direct person offended by being sold into slavery and whatnot. So in this case, there's reconciliation between the brothers, which is good. Ezzy, what you got? I just had two two little examples um, of that happening to me. One, um, a family member came to me repenting over something that I didn't even have any knowledge of like I had no recollection of it or anything and of course I, I was like yeah I forgive you like I don't know what you're talking about like it was so like I had no idea what she was talking about but it was 
obviously something that she, that was bothering her or she had a moment where she felt like she needed to confess that. And I mean, we were good before, we've been good ever since, uh, but clearly that was healing for her. Recently, I've shared with you all that my aunt, me and my aunt have finally reconciled and that she truly repented. Um, now this was something that happened almost four years ago, but I did go to her before, you know, trying to have that conversation and it was a lot of, um, she was shifting a lot of blame and there was no accountability whatsoever, even though she was the whole, she was the, the, the main participant behind everything. Um, but I still went on, you know, through life, dealing with life and, you know, still learning Yahua and not really, I won't say that I had forgiven her, but I had somewhat moved on from the situation, um, waiting for another opportunity to present itself. And one did, and the conversation was very different. She was more remorseful. She actually acknowledged, you know, what she had done. And I was able to walk away instead of how I walked away with that first situation, like, well, you know what? It was years ago, whatever, I'm moving on, I'm moving to a different state. It was like, I was able, and I did reach out to her saying, you know, I don't feel like I can truly forgive you unless you take responsibility for this. And I wanna be reconciled to you, but I just, something in me feels like it just can't happen. And like I said, she came back with a sincere apology. You know, she apologized for what she did specifically. And for me, it lifted a burden that I didn't even know I had. Um, so it, I know it was healing for her, but it was definitely healing for me. And those are two situations where one, I wasn't even aware of, you know, any offense towards me. And then the, the second portion is I wasn't aware that I was still holding on, um, to something because I didn't get a sincere apology. So both situations, uh, brought healing. Thank you for sharing that, Ezzy. So anyway, guys, I, I just want to leave the message. Uh, reconciliation is beautiful. It's important. Uh, all of scripture, the biggest story in scripture is all about reconciliation. And uh, right now, as we're celebrating uh, Unleavened Bread and Passover 2020, we're celebrating Yahusha. We're celebrating Yahuwah. We're celebrating his death and his resurrection, uh, that his blood uh, passed over us and protects us from the, from the power of, of sin and death. And uh, we celebrate that and we celebrate the restoration of Israel. Okay. Uh, Yahuwah's primary mission coming down to this earth was to seek and save the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to restore a broken kingdom, to restore his bride. And so we're all about the restoration. Uh, we're all about restoration. And, uh, but we're about repentance as well. And uh, we really urge everyone, if there's anyone that you are not reconciled with, if there's anyone that you've offended, if there is a sin that you are leaving lingering and you know that you're wrong and you call yourself, I'm going to address, first of all, our people. Those of you who call yourself Israelites, Messianic, Hebrew roots, whatever the case may be, you believe in the Torah and you believe in Messiah. And if you are trying to celebrate this feast, of Passover and unleavened bread, and you have leaven in your heart because you have sin that you have not confessed, you have not reconciled with your brothers or your sisters, you're wrong. And you're actually defiling the feast. You're defiling this holiday. Yahoo is not pleased with it. And I would urge, I would urge you to stop celebrating it and go reconcile and then come back and continue celebrating it. Because you're not doing Yahuwah any service. You're not pleasing him by having this stuff lingering. You know, all these feasts should be good checkpoints to make sure you're right. I mean, every day is the time to get right. Every day, every week, every Sabbath. You can't even, I ain't gonna lie. I've been a little, I've been a little inspired by the epistle of Barnabas. He's tugging on my heart just a little bit. There's some stuff that he talks about in there. He's got some good pointers. You know, he's not against the Sabbath. The epistle, the epistle of Barnabas is actually for the Sabbath. I can't wait to do my next video on the epistle of Barnabas. You talking about the gospel? No. The gospel of Thomas was first. Epistle of Barnabas is next. Yes, epistle of Barnabas is for the seventh day Shabbat. He's actually for it. He's more for it than some of our Israelite brothers because he actually preaches about it that if you defile it by holding on to sin, you're actually not sanctifying the day. You're not making it holy. 
You're actually defiling it. So repent. Why don't you circumcise your heart? Why don't you go deal with these sin issues that you have, idolatry, whatever the case may be, and then you can sanctify the Shabbat properly. I, a hundred, after reading it again, I was like, you know what? This guy is on the money. So, and that's back in the first century. That is a first, that is a first century writing. And it's found in the Christian writings. Okay. Anyway, but I really believe that that is a good message right now. Reconcile, reconcile, man. We need to work together. This is a time to work together. Okay. We need unity right now. And if there's any offenses lingering, you need to make that stuff right. There's some people that don't even know they offended you. And now I'm going to talk to the people who are offended. And you're holding on to an offense. And don't nobody know you offended. Some folk are offended and ain't even never been addressed before. They offended because they've been indirectly affected by something somebody said. You know what I'm saying? Somebody shooting the dart this way and you over here on this side and you felt like you got hit with the, the arrow and even go your way. So what's your responsibility? Your responsibility is go to the person and say, listen, man, you had said something, man, that I felt like you were talking about me. You never know. That person might be like, yo, I wasn't even talking about you. And so now it becomes your problem. It's not that person's sin. It's your sin. Why? You're entertaining all these extra thoughts in your mind about that person. You losing sleep and getting all stressed out, allowing these tormenting spirits to torment you because you're not forgiving them for a sin that they didn't even commit. You're holding unforgiveness in your heart. And that's not good. And this is a great time to self-examine yourself and reconcile. Let's learn from the story of Yosef and his brothers and work on reconciliation. Anyway, that's all I got to say. I hope you guys are blessed. Love you guys. Shalom.